Right, we're on. Today we're going to do a little drill that kind of brings things back to the normal if you're not playing well. Um, it's a way of kind of refreshing things. So it's a drill that can easily be incorporated into your game at any point, any time. As I say, it'll bring you back to the neutral and it's a real refresher. This drill's a good one for everybody to be honest with you. I see a lot of people in the range bay when I'm coaching and their arms are... What they do with their arms is not quite right. It's, it's not exactly what you would class as the perfect position if you like. So when they take the club back they get their arms and elbows in funky positions. When they follow through they've got a bit of chicken wing going on. This drill will take all that away. On the top of the backswing you'll be in a better position. On the follow through, or the same position, the follow through you'll be in a better position. And this will also help plane and path. Sounds good. Love so par five, first hole, let's have a wee look at this. I've just hit driver, seven iron, nine iron. The, um, can you see? I don't know if you can see. Ball beside the flag somewhere. Um, I hit driver. It would have been more than my rescue club wouldn't have got over these bunkers here. I don't think because of the wind, so played 7 iron, missed the fairy with it, and then popped 9 iron into, I don't know, 15 feet. Let's see if we can hold that. When you're playing par 5s and it's into the wind or it's, you're, you're going to struggle to reach into, don't just grab 3 wood out your bag, you know, you've got to kind of place your way up the golf course, plot your way up the hole, give yourself the best chance you have. I've hit driver 7 iron, 9 iron into about, it's about 20 feet. A uh, little left to right, I'm going to use my dead aim marker to make sure I can get a good line on this and see if we can get a 4 from what seemed like a tough par 5. Just never hit it, had the line though. So as I mentioned, this is a little refresher to bring golf back to where it should be. If we're struggling too much, as I say, this, this drill is going to tone things down, it's going to get the arms in the correct position. And it's a really simple one to be honest. So, when I coach I see a lot of people get up to the top of the backswing, up here, flying right elbow, right elbow's out there, the right elbow's higher than the left elbow, right arm higher than left. And then when we follow through, I see a chicken wing, which is the opposite left elbow higher than right arm. So left arm, left arm higher than right. These are not good positions. These are going to alter path. If I'm up here, I'm over. If I'm chicken winging it, chicken winging it, I'm cutting across the ball, I'm shearing the ball. So there's lots of things there. There's lots of little things that can go wrong from these wrong elbow positions if you like. If you don't have this problem, don't worry about it. But it's a good checkpoint to look in the mirror, look in reflection of your patio doors, anywhere you can, get your guys to film you, your pals to film you, and just see, are my elbows in the wrong height in relation to each other? Does that make sense? And what I mean by that is when you take the club back, top of the back swing or halfway back, you want to make sure the left arm is higher than the right arm. So I'm up here, you can see my left arm, it's higher than my right arm. That background noise is green keepers. Everywhere I go film just now, there seems to be green keepers. It's just, it's life. So top of the backswing, you need to get left arm above right arm. You can see my right elbow is below my left arm there. That's a good position. If you do the opposite way in here, you can see the position I've got myself into. I'm going to have to manipulate somehow on the way back down, but trying to drop the club below me, that's not good. Just get the left arm above the right on the way back. On follow through, we see chicken wing, we come down and we're in this position, left arm higher than right arm. Face on, that looks like this. And you can see the left elbow is clearly higher than the right arm. And that again is going to encourage me to cut across the golf ball to get into that high left elbow position. That's not great. So really taking the club back, we want left arm above right and then right arm above left. Left arm above right. Right arm above left. That really is where we want to get to with that. We want that arm up, left arm high, right arm high. 
left arm high, right arm high. That's it one. So left arm above right, right arm above left. So I've teed these balls up. Just to make things simple because we are having a refresher here, we are thinking bringing things back to neutral if you like. Left arm above right, right arm above left. That's all good stuff. If you're teaching juniors, if you're teaching the game to a junior, if your child's starting to play golf, get them to do this. Just get them to understand that the left arm goes above right, right arm goes above left, and then let the body react to that. As long as they can get that, they're going to have great fundamentals of a golf swing going forwards. And for us, we kind of get away from these fundamentals and we need to pull these back. It's not a classic fundamental of the game, but it's how the arms should work in the golf swing. Left arm high, right arm high. Hope that's helped. Let's go and play a few more holes. dead aim ball marker you probably saw my last video if you didn't see my last video i'll leave a link in the top corner it shows you how you can exactly line up the golf ball with your intended target line and therefore you get your putter in line with where you want to go as well for your start line um, there is a little promo code for that which gets you a discount hold on the promo code that i'll leave in the box below in the description um, when you use that it gets you 10 percent discount on the dead aim ball marker it really is a magical piece of equipment it's just a cool wee thing to have in your pocket as well I'll not get into it, if you watch my last video it'll give you a full rehearsal of my, or a full explanation of my experience with it um, go back and look at that, and as I say, if you use the promo code in the box below you will receive discount it certainly helped my part Right, we've that's me played three holes. I played the first hole, which is a par five, got par. Then I jumped over to the fourth tee, did the video, played the fourth, which I birdied, you saw the putt go in, and then that was a par three fifth, which I've parred, so I'm one under par. We're now on the sixth par five, although we're playing from forward tees because it's the winter. Um, I'm gonna play the sixth and seventh, and let's see if we can finish under par. So par five off the front tees, but still into the wind, still playing a long way. It's starting to rain a little bit now as well. So into the wind, par 5. Just because it's a par 5 doesn't mean I'm going to kill this, I'm just going to hit a smooth driver up there, then I'll play my shot from there. Remember the first hole we played 3 shots, driver 7 iron, 9 iron? Might be the case again. Good. Just up the right half. Yeah, fine. Oh.
dead frog. Right, good drive just up the left side, uh, right side of the fairway. It's opened things up. I've got 197 to the pin. I think if I can get three iron running up towards that, into that wind, so we chasey, punchy one. I don't want to get up in there because it's going to stall on me. Try and punch the iron in there. Going a bit high though. Well, that's fine. Well, we've got an eagle chance. <gasps> Thought I'd float it a bit high. These um, one length irons. I uh, the utility anyway. It goes it goes high. This is very often the four iron. Four iron is very different. It stays really low. Anyway, so we're up there. It kicked off the bank on the left, and we're now sitting there probably about. So about 20 odd feet from here. So I flew three iron all the way, it just hit off this bank up here, ran down. I didn't think I would be able to carry it that far. So it flew further through the air than I'd planned. Tried to land it short and let it run on, but it's, take that. So chance for Eagle, let's get three under. Just left it out there. Right, we'll take the four. Wasn't a good putt, it's quite bobbly those greens. I'm blaming the greens. <laughs> right, so we are two under par, one hole to go. So I'm quite confident I'm gonna finish under par. Well, this is a hard par four, dog leg to the right. You'll see this, it's 90 degrees. To swivel this camera around, let you see. So we go, go straight down there and then it turns 90 degrees over these trees so the, the actual green is about here somewhere behind this row of trees. You can hit driver over this, over the W. Uh, I'm going safe down there, heading towards green. I'm walking away here under par. A good shot, it was a little bit tighter line than the plan that tailed off a fraction, but because I had a good starting line, I'm, I'm in play. I will be under par. <laughs> right, 128. 128, gonna hit 50. Bit of a sort of mucky lie, this. Quite easy to dig this one. So I've got 50 degrees. I've had trouble with this club from this distance, to be honest, since I changed wedges. The 54 and the 58 are great, but the 50 I've been struggling with. Let's just get a good solid swing on this. I can be confident because there's a good backstop at the back of this pin. Full 50. Oh, it was a wee bit heavy. Pushed it right, that's just rubbish. Not good, not good at all. Not happy with that wedge. 50 degree, it's the Wilson PMP. As I say, the 54 and 58 working really well for me. I think I might go back to my Cleveland 50. Still, back edge of the green, back right, pushed it. Um, Probably about 40 foot for birdie. A couple of putts were two under. One putt were three under.
just never hit it. Right, finished two under. That little drill that we did earlier on, it seems ages ago now, um, it just really refreshes things, brings things back. Great for juniors, great for beginners, great for everyone that's starting the game, just to, to understand if the right arm, the left arm is higher than the right arm in the backswing, right arm is higher than the left arm in the follow through, then work the body around that. Very, very simple. The game becomes a lot easier. Guys, if you've not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Why have you not? Come on, why have you not? Subscription is free, as you know. Please share the videos around as well. Just copy the link and share it anywhere you want. Uh, thank you. I am going to go home now because I've got a very sore head. Oh. Oh, somebody asked me, am I playing Rick Shields Golf Day, the YouTube um, charity day? Yes, I'll be there.